Hey friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And I just finished posting a different Kaiser review, that of the Swayback. Today we're taking a look at the Zip Slip. Yeah, it's a slip joint knife. I've got the blue G10 version. Comes in several colors in G10 and N690 steel. But they've also got a titanium version with S35VN that you can get as well. This guy is $69 at White Mountain Knives before your discount, or the titanium is $144 before the discount. Since it's a slip joint, I've got links for Europeans, uh, people in the UK, you know, to get these knives if you want to. I've just looked around and tried to find the best prices that I can find for you, and I've got those listed down below. But uh, if you're in Canada or United States, the best place for you guys to get this is probably White Mountain Knives after you've got your 10% discount with code CCE. That makes this a good buy and under the $60, well, not quite, it's around $62, $61.90 or whatever. So it's really close to the $60 limit that I've softly put on myself for 2021. And I've been enjoying this knife. If you're looking for a slip joint knife that is very safe to use, this might be the one that you, or one of the ones that you want to take a look at in your list of maybes. So let's get down to the tabletop and we're going to take a good close look at the Zip Slip by Kaiser. In their Vanguard series, oh, I should say, it's uh, Vagnino is the designer's name. Without any further ado, let's get to the tabletop. I'm going to take a look at this knife. Let's begin with a size comparison with the Ontario Rat one. That's a big knife compared to it. It just, it just really is. So maybe let's compare it to a couple other knives. Maybe you don't know about these knives, but I'm going to review these guys this month as well. The Bag Lighter Mini and the Kaiser Pinch. Yeah, it's very much the size of these smaller knives, and I'm going to try to get these both reviewed in November as well, uh, because I've had them for a couple months now, and I just need to get them reviewed. And I've got some more knives coming in soon, so there will be some more unboxing videos before too terribly long, but there you go. Is that blue? Actually, that blue's not bad. The contrast is still okay. I was thinking that I might just pull the tablecloth off and do it on the gray background, but I think this looks okay on the screen. Let's take a closer look at this thing. We've got a drop point blade with a swedge that comes down here, a nice bit of belly here, short straight section, a very unique sharpener's toil. It looks like just a triangle notch got cut out of it. We've got a flat grind here that is not up to the spine, so it's like a saber type grind. You've got a hole, a sort of like a half moon circle kind of hole. It's chamfered around the edges. The back spring tension on here is so strong that you can deploy the blade with one hand, but it's not very easy. It really is a two hand opening knife. So this should be legal in most places. The blade length is under three inches. And it's a slip joint, so very, very few places would have laws against this knife. One big problem with this knife is the description by Kaiser. They say that it is a stone wash, or it has a stone wash finish. Now, they say that the pinch has a stone wash finish as well. So, let's put these things beside each other and get the computer, the camera here to focus. There you go. Maybe I can get it to focus even closer. Do those look like the same kind of finish to you? They certainly don't look like the same kind of finish to me. And yet everywhere it says this has a stone wash finish. This is a bead blast or sand blast finish. That's, that's what it is. N690 steel. It says zip slip up here on the flat. And on the other side, we've got Kaiser in the same spot. Back here, we've got the model number V357N3, and there it says N690. I don't like the badging that far out on a blade. I'd prefer if it was up here on the Ricasa or something, but it's not that bad because it's not a dark black, and it's, yeah, like I said, not that bad. We've got the Vagnino 
name right there. So for uh, those people that uh, like to know what the designer is, there's the name. I like that. I like the idea of having it right there. And if there's a backspacer that's metal, I sort of like sometimes when there's writing on the backspacer right there as well. So that's the basics of the blade. We've got a half and half choil. There's no jimping on here anywhere, but the choil is very comfortable to use since your finger is on the handle half. You've got a wide spot to cover you know, your finger for your grip. So that's quite good. If somebody were to, or you accidentally have something push on the back of the knife, as long as your finger's there, it just pinches your finger a little bit and not even that much because it's just a rounded surface. So there's not a hot pinch that happens. It's a very secure knife for your hands. If you are holding it back here, well, you need to follow the typical rules of using a slip joint knife, which is don't have things hit the spine of your knife. Uh, I learned on slip joint knives, so and that's what my father gave me as a boy, so I don't really need the forward choil, but it is very comfortable to grip. It's just always use every knife as though it's a slip joint because knives with locks can fail. And so you want to keep your fingers in places where if something fails, you're still going to be safe. So we've talked about that. We've got a nice big T8 screw there, good high quality screw. And there's another screw head right there. And I've not taken it apart yet. So we're going to find out if that's a D-shaped uh, pin or if you need two screwdrivers or what. We'll find that out in just a little while. We've got button screws that are sunk into G10 right here. They are T6 as well. I guess we just have to deal with it, right? We've got a bead blasted backspacer spring as well. The liners are more like a, a satin finish or a polished finish. And then we've got the pocket clip, also a polished finish. It's a deep carry pocket clip. It actually sticks out a tiny bit further than the handle. It's got two screws that are wide set apart, which you don't see that often, but it's right side only, nothing on the left side. And for slip joint knives, I really don't care if a pocket clip's one side only. I actually prefer it. It ends in a scoop going up, but that's just fine by my books. Let's take a look and see how well it goes into a pocket. Well, let's just use the coin pocket this time. Climbs over every time and it goes down to the full. Actually, that sank to the bottom of my coin pocket, so I got to put it here. It goes right to the bottom every time, as long as there's not something that hits the end of the knife. And so when that's sitting there, you know, it's well hidden in your pocket. And with that nice big hole, it's easy to get the flesh of your thumb, the meat there, sunk in there, pull the thing out, even though the G10 has that finished surface, sort of like a polished surface. It's got a slight 3D milling, so it's got a, quite a little bit of a radius on there. If you look down on it like that, maybe this side's better. You can see that the G10's thicker here than it is at the spine or the belly. So it's got a nice radius on it, and it's smooth. But... There's enough grip on this thing to use it. I'm totally fine with that. I might like the radius here that they put on the edge of the G10 on the belly side. If they would have rounded that just a little bit more, it'd be a little more comfortable, but that's a very minor kind of issue. Some people would like a lanyard hole. There certainly is enough room there. They could have put a lanyard hole back here uh, because the knife going in here, there's just... There's a lot of space back here, and when we take it apart, we'll see that, I'm sure. I've got a nice tip here, and when your finger's in there, it works good for piercing things, and it cuts okay, but we'll talk about all the dimensions and sizes and everything in just a moment. Actually, that moment is right now. Let's do it right away. Starting with the Blade N690, it's got a Rockwell of around 59, 60. It can go to 61, maybe a little bit higher. Usually it's around 59, 60. We've got a weight on this knife of 104 grams. That's 3.65 ounces. So it's a little heavier than it looks at first glance, but it's far from heavy. The sharpness from the factory is 105 best, so better than average. The cutting edge length 62.3 millimeters, 2.45 inches. 
blade length tip to the G10, 72.8 millimeters, 2.87 inches, so easily under three inches. The thickness of the blade is 2.93 millimeters. That's 0.1155, so just a bit under an eighth of an inch. The blade depth is widest right in here, and that is 23.3 millimeters, 0.917 of an inch. How thick is it behind the grind? It's 0.48 millimeters, 19 thousandths of an inch. That's good for starters. The grind angle, I'm going to say that this side is about 19.1 and this side's about 16.5. But this side, it starts at 16.5, goes to 17, ends at 16.1. So that's how I'm going saying 16.5, 16.45, whatever is the average. This side though, it started at 19.1 and that continues for at least two thirds of the knife. And then halfway through the belly, it starts going down and ends at 16.6. So since we do most of our cutting in this kind of area, I just said this is 19.1 and 16.5. So not bad. For a light duty knife, a light duty EDC like this is, I would probably sharpen it at 18 degrees or side per side. And I think I'd be very happy with that. The length of the handle, not counting the pocket clip that sticks out a tiny bit. That is 101.6 millimeters. That's four inches on the nose. The grip area, if you count this area back here, it's about seven and three quarters centimeters, which is about three inches. If you use the front as well, that's about 10 centimeters, almost four inches. So big hands can be comfortable with this knife. The thickness of the handle, is uh, measured not with the pocket clip, just the G10 at the widest point, 11.7 millimeters, 0.46 of an inch. The handle depth, 25.4 millimeters, which is one inch. When the knife is closed, the widest point's right about here, which is 32.7 millimeters, 1.29 inches. Oh, and I forgot to do the conversion, but it'll be on the screen. I've been doing that a lot lately, haven't I? The total length of this knife is 173.5 millimeters. And the inches is on the screen. It's right around seven, six and, well, a little over six and three quarter inches. So it's not a very big knife. I already talked to you about the price, $69. I think that's a little overpriced for what you get. But if this is what you're looking for, you know, you save 10%, making it about $62.10. That's about $77 Canadian. Maybe that's exactly what you want to pay. I did, uh, I'll leave links down below. Um, Blades Canada has this for $111.99. So you can either pay $112 or you can pay $77. So that's about 45% more money to buy this in Canada. And as it's a slip joint, you're going to have zero issues, my fellow Canadians, importing this into Canada. And I rarely have to pay any duty when I buy knives at White Mountain Knives. It just happened while CBSA was doing their work to rule program uh, earlier in 2021. But, you know, I've bought over 300 knives there and it's just been a few of them, two packages that I had to pay duty on. I'm not sure where I was when my battery unceremoniously ran out of power, but I was talking about the prices, I believe. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper to buy this, my fellow Canadians, at White Mountain Knives. Save your 10% with coupon code CCE. Don't pay any taxes. Of course, I can't guarantee that, but it's a very, very tiny chance that you'll have to pay any duty. Uh, Heine Haynes has the black G10 one for the lowest price, 69 pounds. And they've got the lowest price on the titanium, 142 pounds. That's in the UK. Uh, in the European Union, eknives.de has got this light blue one and the titanium one for 73 euros and 130 euros. Uh, another store has got more of the colors. Uh, mygoodknife.com has got it for just under 80 euros. And uh, Moonraker Knives actually has the... Uh, 
best price in the UK. I forgot about that. 65 pounds for this. So I've got all those links down below to make it easy for you guys to get them. So what do I think of this knife? Well, I really think that that's not a stone wash. I, I just don't see how a company could make that mistake and call this a stone wash and how vendors just, you know, call it a stone wash as well. Doesn't anybody ever check? I don't know. The funky sharpness toil, it's actually quite nice. I didn't have anything ever get caught in there. I guess it might be easier for stuff to get caught in there than a round sharpness toil, but I'm not sure. Uh, nice grip on this, nice 3D milling, good texture. Uh, just wish this was rounded a little bit more there. The half and half forward choil comes in very handy. Oh, I didn't show it before. They've got a half stop. Well, it's more like a three-fifth stop instead of being right at the halfway point. Stops right there. And then you have to keep pushing until the spring takes over at the end. And, of course, there is a stop built in at the bottom there. It touches that foot right there and stops the knife edge from hitting anything. The shape of this blade coming up here, you can see that it ends right there. So they could have had this back spring come back a little further, and definitely there's room there, I think, to create a hole for a lanyard, but they didn't do that. It's got quality screws, quality hardware back here, just like Kaiser usually does. Not that I like the T6 screws, but that's just the way it is. Uh, the badging, I don't really like it there, but it's not too dark, so that's that. Let's take the thing apart and show you how it's built. Let's see if I can get it out without using... Nope, I can't. It's all the way loose now. It's just freely spinning. See, I'll do this here. And if we focus there, you can just see it spins along. So that's a little frustrating which means I'll have to take out my table vise, hold it, use two screwdrivers. I'll show you what it looks like when I've taken it apart. It came apart on not this side. The pin goes all the way through, and it came out on the other side. There's lots of oil here, so I need to wipe that down. So oil protects the liners and everything, but I do wish... Well, I have every expectation, I just should say, that that's stainless steel. So you, I think you don't really need oil on the G10 and the stainless steel. It just doesn't make sense to me why there is oil there. We've got two pins here that are alignment pins for the back spring. Sometimes it can be a real pain in the butt to get one of these back on after you take it apart. But I'm gonna try anyways because that's what I do. If I can't get it back together again, well then you've seen all the images you're going to see of this knife. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be able to get it back together again. It might be frustrating, but I'll be able to get there. There's some oil there as well. Okay, that looks good. We've got a bronze washer here. Actually looks more brass than bronze. You can see that right there. So let me get that off of there if I can get behind it. Oh. There we go. Oh, they've got dual washers back there. So let's get that off. There we go. So we've got a very thin washer and another washer. Let's put those over here. And that's as far as I'm going to take it apart. This is interesting, the way they made it. This is just a backspacer. I was wondering why it wasn't moving up and down. So they've got this backspacer here that moves, um, that doesn't move, and then they've got an inserted spring here. We've got a backspacer that goes the full length and doesn't move up and down like on a typical uh, slip joint. They put in a steel spring here and then the knife sits there, that's the half stop, and then it comes over that, and then it sits there. 
So just then my spare battery died. Thankfully, I've got a third battery. <laughs> so I was talking about how this is made. I really like this. This means it's going to be easy to put the knife back together again because you can take the blade out and just put this back in there. It can be a little tricky to get the blade in there, but you've got the advantage of you could use a pair of pliers or something to pinch the spring back and then put the blade over the tang. But these two alignment pins and the screw pins, they're always going to line up. You're just going to put it back together just like that because that's not going to move at all. So I really like how they've built this. It's uh, Maybe you've come across one of these before, but this is my first time I've seen this building, this construction method. So I really like that. Thanks, my friends, for watching my video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Let me know what you think of this knife. And remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. And bye for now.